I was slipping away into a calm, steady rest. The quiet of my room was thick, and I could only faintly hear the AC units whirring outside. It had been a few months, and I had grown accustomed to the creaking floorboards and the settling of our new house, but I felt uneasy. Since we moved, my dog had been resistant to coming into my new room. He would fight and struggle with me, and even when I tried to coax him in with food and treats, he would sit at the edge of the stairs and whine pitifully at my door. Even with the oppressive Florida heat, my room always felt cold. In my 13-year-old mind, I had to ignore these issues. Just like every night before this one, I had to sleep. I suddenly woke up to a loud crash in the room. It sounded like someone had tripped over something and knocked into my dresser, flinging my toys and books and bric-a-brac around the room, or like someone had emptied a silverware drawer onto the floor. It was a loud, shocking smattering of sounds. I, let him, I laid in my bed for a long time, not breathing. Something was in the room with me. I stayed perfectly still and listened intently with my eyes closed as tightly as I could keep them. But nothing happened. I made a plan. I would count to 300 and listen the entire time for anything that would let me know that I wasn't alone. <laughs> Breathing, movement, shifting in the darkness, anything at all. If I heard something, I would reevaluate. But if there was no sound, I would need to move quickly, roll to the side of my bed, and turn on my light. One, two, three, nothing. My heartbeat thumped in my ears as they grew hot and I started to sweat. 100, 101, 102, nothing. I thought, what if this burglar is doing the same thing? What if he's counting to 300 as well, and we're both sitting in the darkness, counting and both going to make a move at the exact same time? 200, 201, 202, still nothing. Then finally, 298, 299, 300. I kicked the covers off my feet and turned on the light. I was shaking and I was scared, but I was ready to fight whatever man or woman was in my room. As the light flashed on, my eyes adjusted to the new glaring brightness, and I saw that nothing was there. I peered past the edge of my bed. There was nothing. I lifted up my bed shirt, uh, shaking, waiting, but I was alone. <laughs> what I did see was my dresser drawer had pulled itself out and flipped over 180 degrees, spilling everything onto the floor. After a few moments of slow, steady breaths, and with no other choice, I picked up the contents that included some yo-yos and Hulk comic books and put, them uh, put the drawer back in. I laid awake most that night and stared at the ceiling, but I didn't hear anything else. I told my family about it the next day, but they mocked me. They said I was imagining things or that I had dreamt it. They, would, uh, that I, uh, they knew I was scared, but of what? How can a new house be haunted? How could I not tell the difference between a nightmare and reality? One night a few years later, I was cleaning out my closet. I had a relatively large sliding closet door that was a mirror. I was coming out with a pile of books when I heard something behind me. It was a gentle, slow tapping. I put the books down on the dresser and turned around. One of the mirrors was gently rapping on the other. My brothers must be wrestling outside my room making my floor shake. Well, that was my thirst, uh, first thought. But I didn't hear anyone else, and I realized it was well past 11 on a school night, and I was the only one awake in the house. The shaking became more intense as I stared at the closet door, trying to make sense of what I was seeing and hearing. It got louder and louder, and the banging became more and more intense and rapid. I searched for an explanation. Our cat must be behind the door, I thought, <laughs> knowing the animals never came in my room. And I confidently walked to the closet and looked, but nothing was there, just a sliding mirror that was banging into itself for no reason, a loud crescendo growing, gagoon, gagoon, gagoon. It became more visible, and the slapping intensity grew, just like the fear building deep in my stomach. Then suddenly it stopped. I remember afterwards I walked in and out of the closet. I jumped up and down, and I tried to recreate the sound, but it didn't do anything. It stayed unmoving. I spent a long time just staring at the door, trying to come up with a plausible explanation, but I couldn't think of one. 
Eventually, I had to turn out the lights and go to sleep. But I had this sneaking feeling something was looking at me through the thin slit in the closet door. Watching me. Stalking me. I didn't tell my family this time. What was the point? Nobody would believe me. Also, I didn't understand why a ghost would do this. I mean, who would come back from the dead and shake mirrors? I could write off the first dresser drawer as an occurrence as some sort of mistake, but this was different. This felt deliberate. Despite my skepticism, I started to believe that my room was haunted. When I was about 16, I was laying in my bed trying to go to sleep when I heard the familiar creaks of the house settling. Creaks my family had told me a million times were nothing more than the plumbing or the air conditioning or simply my imagination, but definitely nothing else. But this time they were different. They were more consistent. They made a soft pattern, and I heard a steady pair of footsteps ambling towards my bed directly and purposefully. I froze. I was laying with my back toward the closet. The room became cold, colder than it felt even on most nights, and through the thick comforter and sheets, I shook paralyzed with fear. I'm imagining this, I thought. I'm finding patterns that aren't there. And that brought me solace. And I relaxed for a moment, feeling a little ridiculous. And right then, I felt something sit on my bed. <laughs> I could feel my body move toward it as my mattress sank down from the pressure of someone sitting right next to my lower back. And I started to panic. I heard the gentle, raspy breaths of what I thought was a woman just a foot behind me. I didn't know what would come next. Would she take my soul now? <laughs> was I going to get possessed? Was I going to see this woman everywhere I went? Was I going to die? Was I dreaming? But after a minute or so of hearing this thing breathe, I stopped thinking. I realized I've been holding my breath, which was absurd. Whatever this thing was, it knew where I was. So I started to breathe. I tried to relax. My breaths first came in labored deep, sporadic gasps because I was so afraid of what lay behind me in the dark. But after a few minutes, I started to feel more calm. Consistency returned to my breathing, and the tension in the room began to let up. That deep cold began to lift like the morning fog. I was still scared of what was next to me, but I was less scared. The fear slowly turning into sadness, and I began to feel a deep sorrow for whatever was next to me. There was a cloud of isolation around her, and she felt desperately alone as she sat at the edge of my bed with her back turned to me and her still labored shallow breaths as she stared out my window. I felt the woman slowly stand up and the weight shifted on the mattress again as I rolled back in the position I was in before she had sat next to me. I heard those soft steps and creaks as she made her way back to the closet. I laid there for a long time. I remember thinking I was gonna wake up soon that this had to be some sort of nightmare. I actually pinched myself, but it was real. Yeah. I was awake. If I didn't tell anyone about the mirror shaking, I certainly never was gonna tell my family about the ghost woman who sat on my bed. This was real, and I didn't need my family to confirm it. But every once in a while, skepticism creeps in. Maybe I left the drawer a little open, and the weight of it made it fall on the ground, tumbling 180 degrees. Maybe the mirror was shaking because of some sort of perfect storm of the pipes and the air conditioning going on in an unseeable, precise moment. Maybe the woman in my bed was my imagination, and I just thought the bed moved, and I just believed I heard the breathing. However, on these nights, in this room, in this house, something truly unexplainable happened to me. Our family has grown since then. I have nieces and nephews, and a brother and a sister-in-law. Even though I didn't tell them about the mirror or the woman, and even though they teased me mercilessly, my bedroom is still the last to be claimed by anyone in the family every single holiday. Thank you. That was Troy Bernardo, everybody. Another vamp, first-timer.